was supposed to be uh, was uh, performed by do Mr. Dr. Seldinger. And we know that the Seldinger technique with conjunction with the use of the sheet with the hemostatic valve has revolutionized the field of endovascular procedures. Even with the advances in, in the technology, technique, and the patient selection, we know that the non-access related complications have came down, but the access related complications are still in vogue with a to, to a tune of less than 10 percentage. So when we think of endovascular procedures, the first thing or the first step which comes to our mind is choosing the appropriate vascular access site to ensure the uh, safety of the procedure and the success of the procedure. And uh, vas when the, uh, vascular access can be either arterial one or a venous one, based on the etiology of the course, what we are looking out for or what we are planning to do for the patient. And in the arterial route, the most commonly used ones are basically first and the foremost would be a femoral route, followed by radial, brachial, and ulnar in other later rare cases. In 1960s, actually, direct carotid puncture was there previously. Now it has come to again because in acute procedures where the other things as a last ditch method, we even now perform the direct carotid puncture. And uh, but but uh, and uh, but now we know that the most commonly used one is the femoral axis, and how to go about with the femoral axis is the topic of my presentation. And my timeline would be, first thing would be to tell you about the short history of the femoral axis and the axis as such, the anatomy, how to prepare, puncture site, the sheets used, the complications, how to treat these complications, the advantages and disadvantages of femoral sheet, uh, femoral root, and special situations, especially in case of children or in case of blockage or other complications, other situations. So going to the history, it all started, we are looking into the circulation, that is circle of Willis, was first described in 1628 by William Harvey. And in 1927, Dr. Agas Monis had done the uh, uh, angiography, first angiography. He had approached through a cut through through the subclavian route. In 1929, Werner Faustmann had for a right hand catheterization on himself, but that was through the venous route, through the brachial vein. Later in 1940s, it evolved. And in 1960s, brachial artery puncture was uh, made in uh, use by Dr. Mason Sons. And uh, femoral root actually was put forward or made uh, in uh, general practice uh, in intervention by Mr. Judkins. So, and in 1977, actually there came a advent of catheter-based intervention pioneered by Andreas Grunzing. The Mr. Jud Dr. Judkin was actually a student of uh, Dr. Daughter, that is Charles Daughter, who is otherwise known as the father of neurointervention intervention. So this is uh, Antonius Agas Monis, Frostman, and Judkins. We know the catheter, Judkins' right catheter, which is used to cannulate the right coronary, and also in case of our, our procedures, uh, in case of difficult arch and other difficulties while approaching or going into the uh, cerebral vessels. He also pioneered with the made up, made the coronary and the pigtail catheters and all the exaggerated curves which we see in the catheters were the idea uh, which came out from Dr. Judkins. So regarding the anatomy, so uh, femoral puncture is done through the femoral triangle, which is uh, situated in the anteromedial aspect of the thigh. So most commonly we approach to the right femoral because it is easy for us. And uh, the boundaries of this femoral triangle, it's, uh, it's the upper part is formed by the inguinal ligament, medial part by the adductor longus muscle, lateral part by the sartorius. And in the tip of this triangle, that is the upside down tri triangle tip, we have the adductor canal. And the roof, the top portion uh, or the roof would be the skin, subcutaneous fascia, superficial fascia, and the deep fascia, which we otherwise called as the fascia latter. And the floor is basically formed by laterally from the iliaso, iliosoas muscle, pectineus, and the adductor longus as seen here. Inside this triangle lies the femoral sheath. The femoral sheath encloses the most medial part will be the femoral canal, which contains the lymph nodes like Clockett and Rosenmuller. Then comes the vein and then the artery laterally and then nerve. The nerve actually lies outside the femoral sheath. 
So it can be the, the, remembered by the mnemonic medial to lateral as van, vein, artery, and nerve. And it is the continuation of a uh, femoral artery is a continuation of external iliac artery, which further uh, uh, after the bifurcation, uh, it is it forms the superficial femoral artery. From the inguinal ligament, uh, when the branches end, other branches end till the bifurcation is termed as the common femoral artery, which is the area of our interest because we are puncturing through the common femoral artery. Surface marking of this basically is from the anterior superior leaf, iliac spine to the pubic symphysis. Uh, it is either three centimeter or two finger breadth below the mid inguinal point. We try to locate the femoral artery with the three finger technique and then go about, about with the puncture. Best, best palpated when the thigh is slightly flexed, abducted and laterally rotated. And uh, uh, this is uh, actually the anterior superior uh, iliac spine, which I'm palpating right now. Then forms the, uh, then the pubic tubercle. Right. Um, so if you now have the surface marking of the femoral sheet, it will be vein, vein, V for vein, A for artery, and now in that order. Regarding the arterial punch, why we prefer the femoral artery and why it is the most commonly used access. Previously, I had uh, discussed regarding, previously it was actually the carotid route and the other routes uh, which were done prior. But with the advent of newer catheters, newer techniques, uh, we uh, came to know that actually femoral artery is the safest route because it is a large caliber artery and less prone to spasm. Large caliber artery helps us to do more intravascular procedures, uh, neurovascular procedures because number of catheters which can be passed increases. And why common femoral artery? That is uh, where uh, before the bifurcation of the artery, it is because it is readily compressible against the head of the femur. And we all know that this CFA region is within enclosed within the femoral sheet and limits any spread of hematoma and tamponades the arteriotomy site. Based on the uh, Rupp's rule, he described that we have to puncture, uh, the ideal site of femoral puncture is at the CFA at a point one centimeter lateral to the medial aspect of the femoral head. Which I'll, uh, and uh, it's not about the skin puncture, but the femoral puncture. So if you see here, uh, you can see the head, femoral head, the most medial part, one centimeter lateral to it, in between the superior and the inferior border of the femoral uh, head in the fluoroscopy, we have that is the site of ideal puncture. But it would vary if we have got any variance as such. It is not, uh, not always the same or, or not always true. And uh, we have to be careful of this artery, that is the inferior epigastric artery, uh, which, uh, which comes, uh, which, uh, it, which is actually just below the inguinal ligament. Rise, arising medially. So when we puncture, the ideal site of puncture as described is in, in the midpoint of the femoral head, one centimeter lateral to the medial part of the uh, head. But if we go a bit below, that is a caudal puncture, otherwise called low stick, there is greater propensity to cannulate the superficial femoral artery or profunda femoris. These are actually low caliber arteries and the, we do this femoral puncture for the sole purpose of getting a high, uh, large caliber artery. So that purpose is not served. And no underlying bone and lack of scaffolding is there by the femoral sheet. So there is increased chance of bleeding hematoma and pseudoaneurysms if we go for a caudal puncture. And catheter related arterial occlusions uh, are more in, in because the, these are small, small in caliber. And we know that the, uh, uh, there are multiple tributaries of femoral vein which cause over the superficial femoral. So when we come down the femoral triangle, the actually the femoral vein tries to tie, uh, tries to override the artery. And so they are in close approximation with each other and multiple tributaries are also formed. So any injury, uh, there is a more likely possibility of formation of a arteriovenous fistula in case of a caudal puncture. So this can be called as a caudal puncture. It's a bit below uh, than the expected uh, region of puncture. High cannulation is basically above or at the level of inguinal ligament in the external iliac artery or where the in inferior epigastric artery could be wrongly injured, means could be injured. 
and associated with an increased risk of intra retroperitoneal hemorrhage due to lack of any underlying bony structure. Once it bleeds, it continues bleeding because there is no hemostatic mechanism or pressure uh, which we can apply over this region. So it is always prudent to have the idea about the external, keep the idea, every puncture we have to keep the uh, eye on the external landmarks. Basically, the skin and the inguinal, inguinal crease. The bony landmarks as described, that is the anterior superior leg spine and the pubic symphysis and the area of maximal pulse, which we try to uh, locate with the three finger technique. And also the fluoroscopic landmark. If in case of difficult puncture or any difficulty, including obese, obese patient, etc., we try to locate the femoral head in with the help of a fluoroscopic mechanism with the help of our fluoro fluoroscopy. But this may, don't, uh, may not hold true if there are anatomical variants, like a high femoral artery bifurcation or a femoral vein overlying the artery it may not help. And the, in case of fluoroscopy, what this is our target zone, where, where we uh, the middle part is the target zone. And the upper part of the target zone, it's very dangerous because it's uh, inferior epigastric artery traverses through this region. And if you go further up, it is actually the external iliac artery. And as discussed, there could be retroperitoneal hematoma. Similarly, caudal puncture, there is the profunda femoris and other branches of the artery coming in. So this is the ideal puncture, which has passed through the uh, cumulative zone, ideal zone. And uh, this... This is an ideal function, one centimeter lateral to the medial head of the uh, fem medial femoral head. And uh, when we puncture, we have to see the direction of the uh, wire which is going. It has to uh, it has to cross the. Okay, it has to uh, cross the midline because otherwise, most likely, it could be must have long wrongly cannulated into a vein. And uh, this, uh, we, we may have to cannulate both the femoral arteries, the right and left in certain <laughs> situations also. So things to do before a puncture is always look into the history, ask the history of the patient, because he may have prior arterial bypass, graft, a peripheral arterial disease, and a recent femoral access with a closure device and any growing complications from the previous access. Prior surgery to the region and presence of any aneurysms in the region. And also as... In any case, we look into the medication, contrast allergy history, uh, and the, the other comorbidities. Also look into oral anticoagulants or antithrombotic agents or prior history of thrombolysis within 24 hours in such patients. And examination part, always look for groin, at the groin for any infection. And palpation of the femoral pulse before, uh, not within the cath lab itself, when the patient comes to us, uh, or when get the patient gets admitted itself, we have to look into the femoral pulse as well as the distal arterial pulses so that we catch a femoral, peripheral arterial disease early and check the basic lab investigations. Be, uh, one most important would be our urea and creatine values and the coagulation profile. We always also, for our purpose, safety, universal work precaution purpose, we look into the triple H, that is uh, hepatitis, HIV, etc. And materials used, Standard 18 gauge needle with a O35 thermo uh, wire that is J tip uh, wire is used for cannulating. And micro access set with a 21 gauge access wire with a access needle with a O18 wire all with all can also be used. This is actually a femoral short sheet and the introducer wire, which is a J tip thermo wire, which is of size O35. There is a color coding system. By seeing the catheter itself, we can identify and say which fringe it is. So in diagnostic angiography, we prefer the smallest catheter so that it can be removed as early as possible and avoid any complications at the local site, including aneurysm or injury, pseudoaneurysm or injury. So we prefer the four fringe catheter, which is red in color. For diagnostic pr pr procedures, we may need the higher end catheters. Uh, that is higher French catheters like black or blue, which are eight to nine French. So this is an 18 gauge needle, the J tip thermo wire, and this is just the dilator alone. We, uh, there is a, a short sheath along with this. This is the micro puncture set, which we use. So things to keep ready in the cath lab when we uh, post a patient for DSA 
uh, rain. This is the local, the, for puncture, we need a local anesthetic agent, basically lid, uh, lidocaine without epinephrine, at least 5 ml. Femoral artery introducer needle, usually we go for the 18 gauge needle and the length of which should be 7 cm. And the syringes, the guide wire should be at least 30 cm long and scalpel and femoral arterial catheter. We go for DSA, we go for the four French one and sterile gauze, sterile saline for flushing the pressure tubings and the arterial catheter. And non and silk and suture rarely used in case of other procedures. Usually we in DSA, we don't uh, suture the uh, catheter onto the thigh. Then chlorhexidine patch and transparent occlusive dressing. If you summarize, we can say that there are 10, 10 steps in the femoral puncture. What are the 10 steps in femoral puncture? One is to always to prepare the site using perfect sepsis, antiseptic solution and dry it with dry gauze. Cover the site with a sterile drape with an opening, a central hole for that the femoral axis site is uh, visible. Second step is to identify the ideal puncture site by the, all the met methods we have discussed earlier. And also looking into uh, bony landmarks, pulse, where there is a maximum pulse, Keep the artery forceps of the, over the point where we are located and just shine a uh, flash of fluoro if we have some, we have to confirm or we are in doubt. And local anesthesia. Inform the patient that you are and reassure the patient that it is a short procedure and uh, so that he will be or he, she or she will be calm. And after the planned site of entry by the needle through fluoroscopy or otherwise, femoral arterial pulsation should be felt with the tips of the middle and the index finger and parallel to the course of the artery. Start with a small dermal blood. Uh, actually, dermal blood to anesth anesthetize the skin and then plant the, uh, then go into the deeper tissues on the either side of the femoral artery. Try not to give multiple uh, uh, injuries to with the needle, especially if the patient is already on a thrombotic, uh, anti uh, like antiplatelet medication. There's an increased chance of bleed to that region. And always aspirate uh, before giving the local anesthetic agent so that we inadvertently don't inject the local anesthesia anesthetic agent into the artery or the vein. And femoral artery catheter a cannulation, as we know, is through the Seldinger chain technique or the modified Seldinger technique. After palpating we, with the index and middle finger, remove the middle finger and inject the needle with index finger and the thumb and uh, hold the needle with the index finger and the thumb and the needle tip with the bevel facing upwards. It is directed almost towards the umbilicus, enter the skin at an angle of 30 to 45 degree. And uh, as the needle approaches the femoral artery, we are, as a, uh, when we puncture, we will be able to see the pulsations through the needle. Once the femoral artery is cannulated, good pulsative blood flow will be ensured. And uh, even the blood will jet up to the lower end of the table, even if the BP is high. Uh, so there should be adequate pulsatile blood flow. And once we get that only, try to advance the guide wear. The guide wear we use is the J-tip guide wear and uh, advance through the needle into the femoral artery. And uh, further, it is the, about 30 centimeter length. It can go up to e descending iota. If there are, there are most of the time we get a puncture properly, but there will be resistance to the J-tip guide wear going into the needle. If it is the guide wire, difficulty of guide wire leaving the needle into the artery, remove the guide wire, adjust the needle a bit because maybe the beveled edge is upside down or it may be touching into the wall of the artery. So uh, adjust the needle, just uh, talk it and then try to put that guide wire. Resistance encod en encountered during the wire advancement. It has passed the needle, but it is not going into the artery properly. Reasons may be that it is tortuous or diseased and maybe a small branch, we had punctured in a small branch, sometimes in a profunda femoris or circumflex, etc. If the needle is up against the wall, slight repositioning either laterally or medially will aid in the smooth guide wire advancement. Always try if there is a difficulty in puncture, go for fluoroscopy, taking extra precautions not to use force while pushing the guide wire because it can cause dissection and other injuries. If this does not work, especially in patients with tortuous iliac arteries, J-tip guide wear uh, should be exchanged. So we tried with the short 
JTIP guide where we can exchange and put a steerable O35 wire after making sure that making sure fluoroscopically that we had entered the properly entered properly into the femoral artery and still the JTIP is not going. Later, when we have got the wire inside, remove uh, with sufficient length of the wire in the artery, remove the cannulation needle, press over that region, and femoral arterial sheath with the dilator can be pushed inside through the wire. Nick. So uh, is not as such necessary if we are using a low French uh, sheath that is below five. But if we are using a five French sheath, uh, more than five French sheath, it is ideal to go for a small nick so that there is entry of the uh, sheath into the soft tissues while inserting it. Then remove the J-tip guide wire with the dilator along. And we, now we have got the axis. And aspirate and flush and always flush, aspirate and flush in a vertical way and flush the side port with heparinase saline and note the time. So that this is actually our side time of femoral puncture. We got an ideal femoral puncture. Then we can start, so we can check this region and we can actually inject through this area uh, to have a femoral angiography. It should be uh, in femoral angiography, it is ideal to go for a ipsilateral anterior oblique view at 30 to 45 degree angulation. That will help in visualization of the bifurcation of CFA. That is a common femoral artery. This view would not be used to interpret any high femoral artery cannulation. If there is a concern for a high femoral artery cannulation, repeat the femoral angiography in the TA view. So what we did was actually the modified Seldinger technique. And this technique allows the entry into an area without any cut down because previous all the procedures with in the history while we were discussing were all actually all cut downs of the brachial subclavian and the other vessel even again agasmonis had did the cut down. So this is prevented and because of small gauge because small gauge noodles are used and there is minimal trauma to surrounding tissues and less pain and faster recovery. Equipments as we have discussed. So this was Seldinger who revolutionized the uh, neuroradiology, neuro, neurovascular intervention procedure. And uh, this is just the graphical representation of how it is done. So it, we start with local injection. Uh, we inject the needle, put the wire. Then we remove the wire. After removing the wire, we inject, uh, we put the uh, sheath. And then sheath is set. So what happens? Sometimes we are failed to get femoral access even for a normal DSA or uh, while we are planning to for second time while we are planning to do a procedure in the same patient while whom we had done DSA before. So what are the tricks and traits to overcome a difficult femoral puncture? After inserting the arterial puncture needle, let uh, if the needle pulsates medially or laterally, the artery is usually located to the side uh, that the needle is pulsating towards. So in case of, this, uh, ideally after each arterial puncture with the needle, we are not supposed to remove the hand and we have to keep the needle in place. Because if the, we remove the, ha the hand, the because of the soft tissue pressure, the needle will go and scrape the uh, walls of the artery. So ideally keep the, with the left hand, keep the needle in place. Uh, fluoroscopic bony landmarks will always help as discussed. And uh, aim the needle to puncture the artery at a level in the lower third of the femoral head. This will access the common femoral artery below the inguinal ligament and above its bifurcation. And in difficult cases, you can go for a micro puncture set. In case of an atherosclerotic femoral artery, which is heavily calcified, rather than going for larger needles, that is 18 gauge, we can go for smaller needles, which can be helpful at times. And you can uh, Doppler ultrasound style uh, can also be used and try the opposite groin or the ra radial approach if you don't get the femoral artery, I mean right femoral artery. Suggestions would be routine fluoroscopy, but it is actually now discussion is that because of the increased radiation, it is ideal to avoid fluoroscopy while femoral puncture and single wall puncture with 21 gauge needle is performed with a small skin insertion to aid insertion. That's another uh, technique and ultrasound guided guidance when there is difficulty and long sheets. If you feel that there is a 
disease that is a tortuous iliac artery or there is actually a disease within the iliac vessels so this is the ideal puncture i would say uh, after palpating with the three finger that is a needle uh, uh, three finger method the uh, on the in the direction of the femoral artery when we get the pulse we in puncture the uh, put the needle at 30 to 45 degree angle directed towards the umbilicus and uh, after that, we can see the spurt of blood coming in, pulsatile blood. And we inserted the wire, that is a short J-tip wire. And after that, keeping the needle in place, we remove the needle and the wire is inside. And we insert a four French fibril short sheath by a screwing technique. And we have now got the axis. And after this has been inserted, remove the wire along with the dilator and immediately flush the catheter, keeping the syringe in the vertical position. So Seldinger needle, usually 18 gauge needle, guide wire we have discussed. Uh, guide wire is actually long and flexible, fine metal wire. They are stainless steel metallic structures that guides the catheter through the blood vessels. And it is it can be J-tipped and straight. Actually, straight ones uh, uh, could be uh, are used uh, in case of uh, children or small children. And J-tipped are, are the ones usually we uh, use in adults to prevent subintimal dissection of the artery. These are the J-tip wires. We can see the tip of the wires. And various catheters are used uh, for access in. So catheter, there is pigtail, H1, Simons, Simons, Cobra, Judkins and amplex catheters. So why? what is the advantage of choosing the femoral route? It allows for the use of larger diameter catheters and sheets when necessary, especially for endovascular procedures. And compared to the radial approach, it consistently demonstrates reduced volume of contrast, shorter procedure time, uh, and less X-ray exposure. Uh, and femoral artery catheterization have a longer history of use and have been shown to be more technically straightforward to perform compared with the procedures conducted through the radial artery because of the limitation that is the uh, small caliber. So this is the ideal placement where we had entered by at an angle of 30 to 45 degree. And uh, we should avoid vertical, this kind of functions. But in case of obese patient, we may end up with, uh, even if we have done it properly, we may end up like this. And sometimes we may need a bilateral groin puncture in case of uh, certain procedures. And uh, if we have difficulty, always go for femoral puncture under fluoroscopic guidance, uh, guidance as shown here. So we are inserting, we know that we are directly going in the femoral artery. We have now got the access. And uh, if there is actually a difficulty in puncture, as we see here, it is. it seems to be at the ideal location, but JTIP is not going. Then we can exchange with the O35 thermowire and advance. This is the same uh, that is negotiating with the thermowire. If you can see, there was difficulty. So, see that it is actually the ideal site of puncture. Still, the J tip was not going. Then we can do this technique. And uh, also, diseased iliac artery, we have to be careful always. So, this is actually a roadmap technique. Uh, if you see, we are negotiating the wire. J wire. And if there is further difficulty, we can go for a sonographic guided puncture. And when to remove the sheath? So femoral sheath should be left in for at least uh, for at least amount of time after angiography because the risk of thrombotic vascular complication as well as bleeding increases with the length of duration the sheath is left in place. As such, the sheath should be removed immediately after diagnostic procedures. If especially if no anticoagulation is used, when anticoagulants are used for the procedure, the sheet should be removed. When the AP, uh, APT, uh, the activated clotting time is about 150 to 160 centimeter uh, seconds, or the plas partial thromboplastin time is 45 seconds. We look, we look into partial thromboplastin time when heparin is used. Two hours after bilirubin is stopped, and in case of uh, last dose of anaxoparin, six to eight hours. If the patient is on warfarin and INR is 2, consideration must be given to use closure devices or 
uh, fresh uh, if not available or it's very if it is uh, not affordable then we can go for fresh ffp before the sheet removal and the basics of manual compression would be always move the patient closer to the side edge of the bed next to the operator removing the sheet to prevent the operator from having to reach over and strain himself and lower the blood bed because we keep the do the angio at a bit higher level uh, if we are do, planning to remove the catheter in the on the table then lower the table and uh, the, uh, that will be comfortable to the operator connect the patient to a monitor to assess the heart rate and bp and always be ready with medications case because last one two weeks back we had a case uh, where the puncture was given um, uh, when compression was given and the patient's bp went down to uh, 50 50 is stalk while removing the sheath, always use the sterile precautions. Aspirate the uh, side arm to make sure that there is free flow. If no back flow, uh, maintain the piston back pressure. Allow the sheath to bleed back briefly to expel any thrombus in such a case. Manual compression depends on the fringe of the uh, fringe size used. A rough roll is for each one fringe, hold for five minutes. So that will help. If you use a five fringe catheter, uh, you have to hold for at least 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And the artery is then palpated from the skin, nick, where, where the puncture has been done or the uh, catheter has gone in. Cranially, with the use of three fingers, then give gentle pressure over the artery with the fingertips of one hand. Sheath is removed with the other, allowing for black back bleeding at the skin incision site to flush out any rem remaining thrombus. And uh, alternately, later, a rolled gauge can be placed over, uh, over the length of the artery and pressure is applied to it with the palm of the hand with the operator leaning forward using whole of his body weight to transmit the force. Uh, the pressure should be uh, reduced during the last. So we decided that we give it for 20 minutes and in the last uh, five minutes of compression, reduce the pressure. So the operator has to reduce the pressure. Once the hemostasis is achieved, the distal pulse is palpated to ensure adequate limb perfusion. If the patient has both arterial and venous sheath, arterial sheath should be removed first and then the venous sheath removed five minutes later. This technique, so if you remove si simultaneously, there is a high risk of formation of arteriovenous fistula and also we are giving dual pressure to that region, uh, then it can cause vasovagal reaction. Always clean the site with antiseptic solution and covered with transparent dressing. Opaque dressings and large dressings should be avoided because they might mark any hematoma formation which is we which we have to be careful of even if the, if the hematoma is so large it can even cause uh, uh, syncope uh, and bed rest advice for at least six hours so this also we say based on the french so based on uh, the compression we said it has one french equal to five minutes there's one hour for each french so if a large catheter is used uh, go for a 10 hours and uh, use of vascular closure devices and assisted uh, compression devices can be used and in child always there is a risk of con uh, the risk of contra induced nephropathy is less in a children uh, so uh, and uh, things to keep in mind is specifically whether absolutely indicated uh, dilute with the contra um, dilute the contrast medium with saline adequate oral or iv pre and post procedure hydration ga for all all meaning that if there is a small it is a small child uh, who is unable to understand uh, our commands, then it is ideal to go for a GA rather than risking with a local anesthesia. Uh, and also conscious sedation can also be tried in this children who are about 10 to 15 years of age. And femoral sheath, routine use of femoral sheath is recommended as it securely maintains the arterial axis, minimize the manipulation at the femoral side and has a low incidence of bleeding. Attention should be paid to avoid rotating the femoral sheath after insertion to minimize the risk of injury. And also while injecting the needle, uh, we have to go maximum horizontal to the surface rather than going vertically because it is harmful for the child and patient may end in dissection. And better to go for the smallest French catheter, ideally uh, newly developed thinner walled four French sheath uh, designed for radial axis can be used for femoral axis in children. And heparin, arterial sheath all, uh, is flush with heparin saline and connected to flow control device, limiting the infusion rate through the sheath. So that is, and radiation dose, try to reduce the radiation to, uh, to the minimum, in, especially in case of uh, children. So 
sir uh, should we go in for uh, discussion of complications because it's more lengthy uh, uh, ask them ask jay shankar whether there is time we have time or we should do it another time uh i talked to J dr jayashankar he said we can do it uh, next time also um, oh, so then let's let's leave it at this just now puncture yes. and yes, let's do complication next time so I... any any anybody having any questions or any suggestions or anything can can everybody hear us i think everybody is muted Yes, sir. We can hear you. So, does anyone have any questions? Well, if there are no questions, let me make some uh, uh, additional comments. I think uh, Subir has done a wonderful job. He has uh, described everything in very nice <clears throat> detail. Uh, but I would just add some things. So, one is in fat patients. There is so much subcutaneous fat. that you cannot feel the art so in fat patients and in very small children neonates and children below 2 i think ultrasound is a good idea so ultrasound guided puncture is better in fat patients the abdomen fat prolapses on to the puncture site you can't see the puncture site so usually you have to strap it up and hold it away from the puncture site in fat patients again you have to be more careful about hematoma because it's difficult to puncture the artery and finally both in children and in fat patients we keep a pillow under the buttock and raise the buttock up so that it becomes easier to puncture so these are small suggestions which i have found very useful especially a, a pillow under the buttock in small children is very useful and uh, otherwise i think uh, what uh, dr subir covered was very adequate and uh, one more suggestion i would have is never push if there is resistance to the wire going in either you have to turn the rotate the needle or you have to uh, adjust so that the wire slips in easily it should not be forced through because if we force it through there may be dissection dissection is not so dangerous in the femoral artery because the direction of blood flow is against the direction of puncture so even if a flap is raised the flap will get pressed against the media the intima flap will not keep on going up like it would if we were to puncture the carotid artery That is a big difference between puncturing the carotid or the subclavian and puncturing the femoral because it is against the direction of flow. So I think uh, with that, if there are no more questions, we can close this session. And next week uh, or whenever, uh, we can complete the complication part because complications are equally important. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Jayankar, any questions or any say? Ah, uh, one doubt is sir, uh, the thing how to use uh, ultrasound? Like, what should be the setting? What should be the probe? Uh, uh, how to hold? I think you have to learn how to use it. So either you ask a radiologist to come and uh, do the ultrasound for you, or you hold the ultrasound probe in your left hand. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Okay. If you can make a road map, that that is ideal. But it's not always possible to make a road map. To be sure, left left femoral artery we have punctured because we are under road map because we have injected contrast on the right side. Now you do you get very small probes also. So if you can get that small probe and do the ultrasound, that is much better. Okay, I think we can uh, we can stop now.
and next week we will go on again thank you very much thank you, thank you.